Well, first of all, let me say good afternoon to members of the media. Uh, we're here today to have a joint press statement between uh, Steve Learning Services and ourselves. Uh, uh, alongside us, uh, my, on my media right is Mr. Warren Jones, the CEO of Polaris Hilton Company Limited. So I'll hand it over to him to make a few, few comments, and then after that, I'll make a few comments on behalf of the BIU. Good afternoon. Uh, thank you, Mr. Furbert, for uh, hosting this press conference. Um, according to the International Maritime Organization, over 90% of the world trade is hauled by ship. For Bermuda, that percentage is probably closer to 98%. And these gentlemen here today and 35 others back at the job, the dock workers as we call them, are the lifeline of Bermuda. Prior to six months ago, I did not give the Hamilton docks a thought. I drove past them, never considered their importance to the sustainability of our island. Once I accepted the job as CEO, I then heard many stories, all negative, about the dock workers, that they were a hard crew, that they would stop work at the drop of a hat, and that they were unreliable and inconsistent. I certainly can't speak for anyone else's experience, but what I found was a group of individuals who are clearly expert at what they do, take pride in their work, and look out for one another to ensure that every person returns safely to their families at the end of each day. The staff that I have come to know understand that this country depends on them, even if the country doesn't know it. As a result, I am pleased to publicly acknowledge them today. They are among the unsung heroes of Bermuda. <clears throat> Excuse me. When we began these recent negotiations, I advised the union team that it is management's goal that Stephen Orange Services become the model for what labor relations can be in Bermuda. This recent negotiation process was marked by frank exchanges, honesty, and, a, and transparency on both sides of the table. As a result, I think we came to an agreement that helps stevedoring services to weather the, this difficult economic period, but also ensures that the staff remains in a position to meet their personal financial commitments. While some aspects of the new agreement are confidential to the parties, I can share that staff will receive a 1.7% increase in wages for the 2013-14 fiscal year. This is in line with the consumer price index for the fiscal year. Additionally, we have agreed to a wage freeze for the present 2014-15 fiscal year, and this will be reviewed at the conclusion of the fiscal year. This concession allows us to consider wages based on the realities of our financial situation at that time, as opposed to agreeing possible wage increases based on a projection that may bear little resemblance to any actual increase or decrease in cargo volume. Secondly, we on the management team expressed our desire to achieve one change in the regular operation of stevedoring services that would signal to our external customers that we are in the midst of positive change. I am pleased to announce to shipping agents, truckers, and import importers that effective 1st of July, stevedoring services will be open through the lunch hour providing over-the-road services. Presently, and for many years, our hours of operation have been 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. and 1 p.m. to 4.30 p.m., meaning that there was no service through the lunch hour. However, from the 1st of July, we will be providing OTR service throughout the day. It is our aim to provide safe, efficient, and timely delivery of goods to store shelves. We look forward to providing a seamless delivery service to the truckers who frequent the docks on importers' behalf. Before I pass over to Mr. Furbert, I must thank the members of the Port Workers Division of the BIU and the members of the management team for the manner in which these negotiations took place. While I was not party to previous meetings between management and the union, it is my understanding that those meetings were sometimes quite stormy. During this negotiation, the Port Workers have taken a risk and are trusting that I will honor the agreement we have reached. They have provided me with an opportunity to change their view of management. We have discussed management's expectations of staff and the union on their behalf has discussed staff expectations of management. As a result, we have found that we have many of the same goals. I am looking forward to moving forward in a new and positive relationship with the staff of Stephen Orange Services Limited and honoring the trust they have placed in this management team. I now pass over to Mr. Ferber. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Well, well, certainly on behalf of the Poor Workers Division of the BIU, uh, let me echo some of the remarks made by Mr. Jones, the CEO of Polaris Hilton Company. We certainly uh, agree that the recent set of negotiations mark frank uh, exchanges, honesty, and transparency from both, both sides. Uh, I think at the annual general meeting in 2013, around June, June 2013, um, 
there was a new board elected by the shareholders, and as a result of that new board went to work immediately to begin uh, working on the relationship between the Port Workers Division and the, and the economy. And I think over the last six or nine months, that relationship has improved. Mr. Jones, uh, having come on board as the CEO in January uh, 2014, has also continued to improve uh, that, that relationship. The Port Workers Division of the BIU has made some concessions in this current side of negotiations. In that, you will find that, um, particularly since 1987, um, all over time has been double time on the Hamilton Dock since 1987. That will now change for the next nine months, from July 1st, 2014, to March 31st, 2015, which will, we, we will see double time being paid only from, from Friday to Sunday, and time and a half will be paid from Monday to Thursday. Uh, that's a concession that the union gave up in, in light of the um, management's challenges that they, they are continue to have, to have. And as a result of that, um, because of the, the relationship that is being built between uh, the current board and Mr. Jones as the CEO, because uh, there's members of the public and there's members of the media, if you, if you may have forgotten that the relationship uh, was rocky there for at least a three to five year period under the previous board and under the previous CEO. Um, and I'm, I'm happy to say that I think today both parties would agree that the relationship is a lot better than what it was nine months ago. I think both parties are continuing to work on and building a much better relationship, and we look forward to working with Mr. Jones and his team to, to make sure that continues to happen. Thank you. Any questions? questions? I think you said it all. With the improved relationship you have, are there any lessons that can be learned in other well, I think the lessons that can be learned is that it takes two parties to reach an agreement, and I think the BIU has demonstrated, particularly over the last three to five years during the recession, that we've sat down to the table, uh, and there's employers that have, have come to us for concession because, as we said from day one, one size don't fit all. Uh, so we're, we're, we've uh, seen to, to grant concessions, whether it's a, you know, a shorter work week, whether it's a layoff, or whether it's a wage freeze or whatever, we've, we've imp implemented all those sort of things. And, and having this discussion with the management team at Steve Rowing Services at, at this current start of negotiations, um, they'll continue to have the challenges where volumes have, have declined for about a five-year period. They saw a fresh, the first increase in the last five years, I think, and the physical period, March 31st, 2014, where, where I think revenue is up like, container volumes up like 1.8%. That's positive. So recognize that if the next year is going to be like, the, as the previous year has been, if, if volumes are going to continue to rise, I think once we have you know, um, certain contracts that, that's again, commercial contracts or uh, construction contracts are going to take off, you'll see, you know, the container volumes rise because that's basically, as Mr. Jones said, you know, that's 85 to 90 percent of Bermuda's lifeline is on the Hamilton docks. The other 10 to 15 percent comes in at the, at the airport. Um, I go back before that because uh, before government I was in BTC and I was in charge of human resources there um, and I think uh, all of the relationships I've had whether in government or BTC with, with the unions whether it be the BIU or the other unions I've dealt with I've tried to um, ensure that it's transparent and open and honest. You know, lure yourself up to Kentucky Fried Chicken. <laughs> that of course. <laughs> Well, just to clarify what you asked me, because what you asked me wasn't what I said. Um, what I had said was that what I heard, sure. right? Not that my perception, the, the, the what the I heard. Yeah. Um, and I think it was, was related to um, partly uh, from what I heard at that time, the relationship between management and staff. Um, and that um, if that relationship is not good, um, then productivity suffers and the, the work climate suffers. Um, and so, as it relates to the present, uh, what I'm trying to do is to, to be transparent, uh, not only in negotiations, but in the day-to-day -day, 
operation of the company. Um, we're trying to ensure that there are regular meetings with staff, that staff are updated on not only what they're responsible for, but the operation of the company. So I'm trying to share financial information with the staff, share what's happening uh, around so that there is um, understanding of the issues that we face. And I think having that information, staff will be willing to work with us to address it. But, well, certainly if I get out onto what Mr. Jones said, and, and I don't want, you know, whether it's the media or the public to get the wrong impression, but certainly what Mr. Jones just said about regular meetings, we encouraged that in the previous management. We encouraged the, the previous board to have regular meetings with the staff so that, you know, once we can agree, agree to disagree, we are, I think we need to sit down and find what are the common issues. And, you know, I, I encourage the CEO there to have, you know, whether it's monthly meetings or bi-monthly meetings to staff to get feedback from them, to get input. Uh, and for whatever reason, you know, he saw fit to do something completely different because, you know, in order for you to have a positive working relationship, you know, industrial relations is about, it's about a process. It's about two parties sitting down and have, having a conversation. And we're not going to always agree. We can agree to disagree, but I think if we can find a common ground to move the process forward, I think what, what Mr. Jensen said to you today is that, you know, when you look at when the new board came in, they, they sensed the tension that was out there in the previous relationship, and they said, you know what, we need to fix this. And consequently, today, and I'm not saying the guys are perfect because from time to time we have our difference of opinion about certain things, and I give them my point of view about how I feel. They can tell you, you ask any one of them. So it's not always you take on the side about issues because if I feel that there's a real issue that needs to be addressed and the guys are, you know, need some different advice, I give them the advice that I think is needed at the appropriate time. 